Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. In my lifetime, I have seen the Cold War between the East and the West dissolve. We welcome change and openness, for we believe that freedom and security go together. In my lifetime, I have seen the Berlin Wall come down. There are many people who feel that it is useless and futile for us to continue talking peace and non-violence. In my lifetime, I have seen apartheid dismantled. It is absolutely important that you have the knowledge to serve your country and your people. In my lifetime, I have seen the man of color in the White House. And out of many, we are one. That while we breathe, we hope. And those who tell us that we can't, we will respond with that timeless creed that sums up the spirit of a people. Yes, we can. Thank you. God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America. In my lifetime, I've seen grassroots movements topple governments through the use of social media. I want freedom. Freedom. Only freedom. freedom. We can come together to heal segregation and redirect civilization to the celebration of diversity in oneness. We can make it happen. I am Brother Ishbatete, and I believe that world peace is possible in our lifetime. It begins with you and I now. Good morning, beloved. <clears throat> So what is your story? That is the topic. What is your story? Mini Jews Sunday. What's some you saying? What's some you? You then? What's some you say? What's some you say? What's some you saying? What you say? Good morning. Yes. What is your story? Mini Joe If you look into life, it's as though we many people are carrying some stories they want to tell, usually very sad stories. Somebody to hate, somebody who stepped on their toes, somebody who offended them, something to lie about, or you find some also living and cowering and hiding in some guilt, in some shame. Recently I went to hell. What did I say? You know, I, was, I told the mystics last week. Was it last week or last two weeks? Last two weeks. I was telling them that I went to hell. That's something I do occasionally. Exit the body consciously and go to other universes and experience what is happening there. And then I met souls who were living in the, in the family of the regrets. And I've been to those wells a few times. Book of... Um, 2 Corinthians 2, verses 2 to 12, tells, 2 to 4, tells you, I know a man in spirit about 14 years ago. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. That man was caught up in the third heaven. So it means there's a third heaven. Then there must be first and second. So sometimes we go to have an excursion in the heavens. And I met beings who were in the world of regret. And regret is a very terrible thing, you know. Very terrible. Um, I, I never know how 
painful regret really is until I saw. Because regret is like you are negating you and at the same time you are there for you. You are tearing you apart and you are still, still there. So I said, why should we live a life of regret? Regret always implies that you have the ability to do something and you did not do. You have the ability to correct something, heal something, be something, and you did not do. If you could always tell yourself that I've done my best, you will not live in regret. But there's always something you could do much better than what you are doing now, and when you don't do it, then you live in the world of regrets when you have exited your body and you regret, I could have, I should have. Oh, it's so painful. So there are people who are living in, in regrets even now, so they are in the hell of re regret. They are in some confusion, some blame, living in blame and cowering. As a result, their creativity is not evolving. They are not evolving their creativity. They are not being their full selves. And I believe that's not one of you. Somebody say, I'm not among them. I didn't hear that. So that's why I want us to discuss what is your story. Ask somebody by your side, what is your, your story? And your response is, it's God's story. So let me ask all of you, what is your story? What is your story? So I want us to come to that realization. That we are carrying stories. And sometimes we need to ask ourselves, the stories I'm, I'm carrying, are they worth carrying? Is my story even true? Is my story authentic? Right? Sometimes in the homes, your children are putting some blame on you. They want you to feel guilty for something they believe you should do for them. Has anybody experienced that? Has any parent experienced that? Yes. You find, and have you done that to your, your parents before? Any hand? Oh, let me see the hands. Say to the glory of God. Yes. So you want to manipulate your parents, make them feel guilty for something wrong you have rather done, or for they not doing something that they believe they, they shouldn't do. You sometimes blackmail them. So you do it to your friends too. Then you go to Brother Fori or Sister Joanne and say, hmm, if, if Brother Fori were to hear that you denied me when I asked you, he will feel very disappointed. Then Sister Joanne feels guilty. Then from the guilt, she wants to do something she knew she shouldn't do. We've all been caught captives in this be before. At the end of the day, you end up living your life story living your life story like a mistaken handiwork of the universe. You're living your life story like a mistaken handiwork of the universe. Because you, you are not running your story. Whose story are you running? Whose story are you living? Every moment, check the internal conversations you've been having in you, in your mind, and you will know that you may be running somebody's story. We are living in a powerful, purposeful, spontaneous, creative, love, intelligent universe. This universe is given with reckless generosity, with abandoned generosity to us. Your journey to the earth was a very serious business. For you to be here, listen to me, for you to be here, this earth will have to be here. It must be spinning a thousand miles an hour to give you night and day, without which there's no life. It must be speeding around the sun at a speed of 67,000 miles an hour to give you the seasons, without which there is no life. For you to be here, the air has to be here. And as Africans, we know that the air is not just air, it is a spirit. Am I right? And the, the, the water is spirit, yes? And the earth is spirit, yes? So we know that all of the four elements, fire, water, earth, and air, are living spirits. They have to be here. They are coded with their own intelligence. They know when to rise, when to fall as rain. Hence, we are able to say it is a rainy season, meaning some intelligence has, has calculated and coded itself to know its seasons. So we are even able to predict the mind of God by saying it's rainy season, it is summer, it is winter, it's autumn, or it's hamatan if you are in Ghana. All these calculations must happen before you come in here. I want you to look into yourself and tell yourself, I am seeking to respect myself. 
I didn't feel it. If you respect yourself, you will not live a life feeling unworthy, feeling inadequate. If you respect yourself, if you respect what it has taken the universe to make you be here. This creative, love, intelligent universe that we choose to call God. This father, mother, God spirit of the universe has to ensure that all of these elements are here and the elements were here when your great-great-grandparents were here. Yes? So they, they've been here in abundance, nourishing your ancestors for you to come. Somebody say, life was here. Life is here. Nourishing my ancestors for me to be here. You see, all this is for you to wake up and begin to respect you. But for you to be here, it has taken life all of these. It has taken life that it must make your mother and father be, their mothers and their fathers be, and their mothers and their fathers to the thousand generations before now be. So life has to be. All of itself for you to be here. And that confirms therefore to you that you are not just, just a thing. You are not just a thing. So the story of your life did not start with your birth, did it? I don't hear you. Somebody said the story of my life started with life itself. From the very first breath, the first moment, the first life, the first scientific big bang, the first biblical let there be light, the first uh, our traditional onyankupong started its life you were there so your life story has started long ago and when you can contemplate on what it has taken the universe to become itself as you you will begin to respect yourself and realize that life provided itself as its solutions before you got here is somebody here with me life provided itself as its solutions before you got here so you also got here as what life's solutions somebody say i'm I'm life's solutions i didn't feel it my knees are hurting they've not gotten the healing let me hear it again if you speak it rightly my my knees will heal speak it again i want you to know that to be true let your knee know this to be true that you are life's solutions your parents were the solutions needed for you to be here did you bring yourself here on on, on the earth could you afford not to be here on earth can you resist exiting from here so you know the truth that you are life's cosmic divine imperative you are the most happy of the universe And the universe is happening as you. That's why you must respect you. Scripture tells us in the book of Jeremiah 1, 5, that before I formed you, I know you. And while you were in the womb, I ordained you. So when you go to scripture, in Genesis 1, 27, God created you in his, her spiritual image and likeness. And then God breathed you out into being, and then God breathed you into the dust and you became a living soul. Yes? yes. So Genesis 1, 27, you were created in God's spiritual image and likeness. In Genesis 2, 7, you were breathed into the dust and you became a living soul. The spirit created in Genesis 1 was released into being. Hence the Bible will tell you in uh, 1 Corinthians, is it 45, 44, 45, it tells you there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Yes? We go to school from primary school all the way to universities, get our PhDs, so that we can provide for ourselves food, clothing, and shelter to manage the material life. We need another school for the management of the spiritual life, and that school are the religious institutions, the churches, the mosques, the temples. Unfortunately, today, the subject spirit is totally lost in many religious institutions. And the church 
has become just a gathering for social activity and who and what we are as spirits is lost to the soul. I will repeat that to live and not know who and what you are is a tragedy. Because without the spirit, you cannot even move a finger. And if you don't know why you are here on earth, it is a disaster. We need to know. And today I'm telling you that you are here as cosmic solution. You are here to be more. The script about your life is written, it is rehearsed by all of life. Your ancestors, the elements have rehearsed you. Somebody say, say life rehearsed me and projected me into being. You see, all this is for you to just be aware that I need to respect me. Life rehearsed you. There was a rehearsal. The elements knew you would be here, so they planned what they should do. You did not go to tell the elements to come and brief you. Did you tell the air? But before you were born, it was happening. When you were in the womb, you did not pray. Life was going ahead of you, providing what you needed before you needed it. So when you were born, your mother's breasts were filled with milk already. Yes? So life solution always go ahead of you. What did I say? So what is your story? So what is your story? It's God's story. Your story is God telling its story as you. This is why it's important to pause moment by moment and listen to what God's story is about me. What is God's story of me about me? You don't punctuate God's story about you. God, the creative love intelligence is in the atom all the way to the ever-expanding universes. This creative love intelligence that goes ahead of you being a solution also designs you to be a solution to something. We are solutions in solution giving universe. And you need to identify what solution story of God you are. When you identify the solution story, you will no more be panicking, filled with uh, low self-esteem, lack of confidence. All these appear in your life because you are not living God's story. God's story cannot be a story that has not got confidence. God's story must be complete in itself at all times. And I want you to capture the vision of your complete self according to the universe. Knowing that you did not bring you here, you could not afford not to be here, in this window of eternity, you are to do and be your best self. Stop thinking you and let your mind capture the thoughts of God concerning you. What did I say? So stop thinking you and let your mind capture the mind of God concerning you. Then you'll come to realize that you are truly here to be more. You are here to be more. Somebody say, I'm here to be more. You are here to be more. You are more than the pains, the struggles you go through. I don't care what you are going through. You are here to be more. You are more than your pains. You are more than the betrayals, the confusions. You are more than the insults. You are more than that. She insulted me, and so what? Life is going on. She insulted me, so you are reduced. If anything in life reduces you, you are an insult to the cosmos. Somebody captured the idea. Good morning. If anything that anybody does to you, about you, against you, reduces you, you are an insult to the cosmos. You are more. You are here to be more. You are more than the pain. You are more than the struggle. You are more than the insult. You are more than the injury. You are more than the disease. Somebody say, I am more. I am more than the illness. I am more than the pain. I am more than the insult. 
I am more than the rejection. I am more than the betrayal. I am more. Exceedingly more. And remember it is true. Yes. Has anybody here been ill before and you got well? Let me see by hand. You were ill and you got well. Somebody say, I survived that illness eh? to be more of my greater self. eh? Do you know common mosquito bite can kill? Have you been beaten by mosquitoes? And you are alive? Somebody say, I am alive to be more of the cosmic vision of my life. eh? Capture that idea. I say, if anything that happens to you reduces you, you are an insult to the cosmos. We follow a teacher, Yeshua, who the world now calls by the name Jesus. We follow him. And even on the cross, master of love will not allow the pain to reduce him to anger and hate. He was still loving. So he could lovingly say, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they do. If anything will reduce you from your center, you are an insult. Then you'll be in the world of regrets. Because the pain was your opportunity to exercise your spiritual muscles of love and to demonstrate what God's stuff you are made up of. It is not to to reduce you or make you less. So focus on the blessings. The discovery of the God's solution that you are is your riches and prosperity. That discovery. Well, the discovery makes you wake up to do God and be God. You know, once upon a time when you were ill, somebody said, let me see what medicine I can find. Sometimes they used you for trial and error. And as a result of the trial and error, some new medicine was discovered, isn't it? So you have become a solution. Am I right? I recall years ago, a woman came to me, an elderly woman, and she was in some deep pain. What happened was that in the hospital, the doctor had to examine her pelvic examination. When the doc- some young doctor put his hand in her genitals, and this elderly woman was in very deep pain. Eh? Oh, la. Eh? Mbi, mbi. Mbi, mbi, kwe, nye, yan. Yes, I didn't be, mbi. Ah, my cousin. Nimbi, mbi. Ah, ah, kwe, yo, he, kenye, yan, fe. Do you understand what I'm saying? Should my child, uh, my, my grandchild's uh, uh, age group look into my genitals? And she was in pain. I agreed with her in an instant. I said, Mom, this is really painful. I agreed. Eh? When I agree with her, you can imagine her pain. Huh? But I said, yes. I said, Mom, do you have children? Yes. How many daughters do you have? I've forgotten the number. I think two, two or three. I said, which of these daughters do you love most? Well, I love all of them. Okay. If you were to die for one of them, which of them would you die for? Oh. oh all of them. I love them. I said, okay. So, if somebody wants to use you to learn something so that tomorrow they can help your daughter, would you be willing to be used? Eh, eh, eh. She agreed. And I said, ma'am, through this, this young doctor will become a very professional doctor. And tomorrow when your daughter is ill, he can give her good examination and cure her. And then she was, ah. Amen. And you are nominated Adolfo. Pese me trima jin eko inchire tre bi ewa tro kron kron nomu. So eko Bible, Moses nguma edikain. Eye Genesis, tiba akon enchiche mwa edu enosia. Nen yanko pon kan se, mumye mo nipa se ye enseso. The Nippon Nam Yasi or Yankopon in Cecil. 
odo enije enkunimdi aho den eye tumi a ewo nyame ni nyina wo onipa dasanim ni atusumi no mie no so ko moses ngoma edikan timie no e genesis timie no enchichemu nson a o se na nyame fa adote e no nyu onipa e no homi gu ni mo enkwa home na obeye okra atiasefo enti nipa ye kra e na osan a ye ni pedue yi na ohwe ya brabo mu aye ba ye ko school ni sua eniema bebre ni nyina kire ye ekwan ye nam so a ni aye be fira ni aye be nom ba bi e be da e xe ye ma emye timi nya sa ni e mai na mu na ka e kra no e fa no ye xe de ni school bebre a e kire ye se ni a e kra no e se ye xe ne ma e fa Ya won sorry bebre e so sorry ni nyina di asori entity ni ni nkyerekyere so na mo pese wudi jesus entity ni ni nkyerekyere so a e be mo hu se nipa e ye kra e no san e ye honam a na e se unya asori a e be bo a so akwa asori mfie bebre na won nim se wo ye honhom na won nim ni entia oba wi ase unim ni a oba ha se oba ye bo type poti a obo ade yakopon no esoma se bra ha be ye unim ba bi a u fri ha wo kwa ni che se wa bra bo no e hwete kwa u hia sori a e be ma san che chire yi nyina a e be sho ma wo honhon mu a wa na mo a u be tu nyina u be hu se wo ye kra na wa she kra no ma ama wo do suban wani je suban wo tumi a ewo mu a eye nyame tumi a obo wo se ne se so no ni nyira da di onua ya ben wo enti se wo ba etire mission headquarters a ye wo sakaman wo free sakaman junction na odi wani kire sakaman a wo tra filling stations mienu e wo nsani fa so a etire mission e di so pepe pe enti ye ton safro kwasi da bia anopa ye shasie no wotwe ene fa ye di akopim no ndumie no oko kuma senso a etire mission ewo deba court hotel ewo ademra ye ton safro en honso kwasi da anopa bia efri no ndu ekopim no ndumie no ye ye mpensem pensem be kan ye ho ne hu wo nyame su ene wo honhom suban sania ete no anante e wo honhom wo ko takura de so a wo anaji estates eh wo be hu ye signboard e wo ekwan ne ho e wo so kwasi e da no pa bia fri no nkron e ko pim no dumie no sa em person person ne chechire e ko so ase wo tu kwan e kwa bro chire so a e wo eh uk united kingdom ye wo 58 goring park avenue e wo mission enti e honso obetime ene yen ehia ade nkita ho ena se wo ko united states nso a america e honso ye wo los angeles a obetime abeshia ye wo ye ni wo ade nkita ho we nyina nso se wutime ene headquarters no de nkita ho a address ni telephone number sa e do be ko uk ene eh us ni nyira le de on sabeka onua omra so se nya obe pega e wo honhom ene nyame mu se nya obe hu onyame tumi ene christo so a wo ye ye fro bra na be ka etiria mission ho na ye ma nipa enkwaje enwie peye nyame nyira o